Hello, this is uh, Pablo Acosta from Prescient. I want to highlight in this video a really interesting and very useful uh, note that is exclusive uh, to Prescient. And it allows to watch a file and produce uh, events or messages when new lines are uh, received or, or uh, that file gets new lines. And if that uh, sounds like the Unix command tail, well, that's the, the obvious inspiration. But it's very important when uh, sources of data, of edge data, are, uh, for example, log files, and uh, one needs to act upon the information of those log files in real time. So in this example, we have um, two subflows that have been deployed to an edge device. As you see here, designers showing us that uh, there have been um, deployed to the device by 3.1. And if we go inside the subflow, again, this um, business logic is running at the edge, but uh, in the center, we can see it all in one place. We have the log line uh, node, and then uh, this uh, chain here is just to show the status of the log line node uh, in the cloud. So let's delve deep into deeper into the uh, options of the uh, multi-tail node. Uh, that's what it's called. Again, exclusive uh, to prescient. So the first uh, really interesting part is how to specify the file name that we want to watch. And here uh, you can see that one of the things is that um, sort of wildcards and, and in general glob expressions uh, are supported. So uh, asterisks, double asterisks, question marks, all the uh, usual shell commands, plus as I said, the, um, the glob expressions from, from the glob package uh, from NPN are supported, which allows to select uh, multiple files uh, to watch uh, with just one expression. The other is, as you can see here, there's this, um, well, you can call token here, which is open bracket, Y, 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 M, M, D, D, close bracket. This essentially is recognized by the multi-tail node as a date specification. And it's gonna be replaced by uh, in this case, the current year as a four digit number, the month as a two digit number, and the day as a two digit number with whatever the day is um, as given by the, the time in uh, the date command in the uh, edge computer. Uh, other uh, expression supported are like two digit date. In this case, all of these are in US format, but uh, European format, uh, meaning day, month, year, also supported both in, in a four digit year or, or a two digit year specification. And you can ask, well, what's the, um, what time zone is that? Well, right here, you have the time zone. In this case, I selected America's New York. So at midnight uh, in the time zone of the Eastern United States, now the specification for the file will change to reflect the new date and any file that matched that specification is gonna be watched. And the ones that didn't the previous day are gonna be dropped. So in this way, uh, and, and this is typically because uh, log files um, usually have their some sort of date uh, in their name. And so it would be quite inconvenient if every day one would have to go and change <laughs> the date of the files that are being watched. And this, uh, uh, with this system uh, between the, the um, wildcards and the globs and the uh, dynamic date specification with the time zone, uh, just a simple single expression allows for uh, dynamic changes. And uh, the next uh, field here is essentially what's constituting a new line. Uh, this is uh, typical, um, specification of what uh, potentially a new line it is. This is just a regular expression. The next field that, uh, or the next uh, option that we have is the polling frequency. In this case, it's at 10 seconds. 
What this means is that every 10 seconds, the file name expression is going to be evaluated and potentially new files are going to be added and files that are no longer there are going to be deleted from the watch list. So what this means is that every 10 seconds, we're looking for uh, files to watch. And again, all this is dynamic. If um, new files appear, every, you know, within 10 seconds, they're going to start being uh, watched and potentially produce uh, messages as lines arrived um, and are created in those files. The next option is uh, the maximum number of open files that uh, is desired. And this is because in some cases, um, the maximum uh, maximum number of, ha of um, file handles are limited by the operating system. If that's the case, you know, and uh, one would want to to limit that. And if there are more files than uh, that need to be watched than the open files, there's a system where most of the files are watched um, all the time, and then uh, a few are just wa watched uh, in um, in rotating fashion, meaning. Uh, they sequentially get scanned for new lines. And then if they don't, uh, then uh, the node moves to the next file. If they are, they, those new lines are printed or emitted, I should say, in a message, and, and it continues. So nowadays, for most um, edge computers, this is a non-issue, but uh, for some really low resource devices, uh, this could be helpful. The next option here is uh, files watched. And this is just essentially how many files um, are gonna be uh, watched. And this is because sometimes I have one um, miss uh, specifies the a glob expression in the file name. It can, one can end up with thousands of files. So this is sort of a, uh, a fail safe um, mechanism so that one can debug that uh, expression. And uh, once once that is done, it can be this this uh, number of files which can be safely uh, expanded. In this case, just set to one. The next one is the period. And this is, uh, if this is set to zero, anytime a new line arrives, a message is going to be emitted with that line. I have set it here to uh, 200 milliseconds or two and a half seconds which means lines will accumulate for two and a half seconds. And then at the end of that uh, two and a half seconds, a message is gonna be emitted with the lines that were received uh, within that interval. And so uh, this is um, to give more flexibility as to how those are, how the, the new lines are, um, are processed. Uh, if, if the system downstream allows for, uh, Sort of automatic or, or can handle um, the arrival rate of, of each line, then maybe this can be set to zero. Or if uh, one needs a, a few lines to, to make a, a decision, then it might be better to, to set this to sort of a, a non-zero uh, period. And if we scroll down, uh, there are uh, two other options, tokens and filters, which I'll talk in a second. But let's just look at uh, this in action. So uh, as you can see, the specification for the file is uh, robot, then dash some, any, an asterisk meaning anything uh, here, another dash and then the date and then dot log. So um, let me minimize this. So I'm here and this is in the lower part of my screen It's just a terminal. Uh, that's connected to the edge device. And I have this a little bash script that's just gonna start, uh, we'll create the file that, uh, a, a file name that meets that the specification and we'll start adding lines uh, once a second. So let's kick this here. And as you can see here, the status of the file is zero files watch, meaning there's, there are no files yet that meet that specification. And once uh, we trigger that, now we're creating a file that's robot dash r4776 dash and, and at the today's date. And so clearly that meets the specification. As you can see, now these two uh, nodes have picked up that file. As I said, every 10 seconds, uh, that file specifications uh, is being checked. 
uh, this file met that specification. And you can see here um, the lines uh, that are being emitted. In this case, in, with my simple example, the log file has the date and time. And then um, in this fictional example of, say, this is a log file that um, it's tied to a robot, maybe in a fulfillment center. Uh, it, it gives the uh, X and Y location of that robot and the speed um, at this particular timestamp. So uh, you can see uh, super easy. In this case, it's just one, one file being watched, but the same specification, if I create another file with say a different robot numbers and instead of R4776 would be something else, then you know you, you keep watching those files and, and the lines will uh, come out. So um, other metadata can be, um, um, this is just a payload. Um, the file name that that emits this files uh, these lines uh, is also um, sent in a message, um, so one can know what what that file what these lines correspond to what file it could, it could correspond to. So this is all well and good. Uh, so this is helpful in and of itself, but we can do more. Uh, so in this case, we get the line, but it's just it's just a string, right? So it would be good if we can give it some structure and instead of getting a string, it get just an object with all these different components of the log line. And that is what the, um, let me get this bigger. This is what the other options uh, that for the tokens and the filters are for. So the tokens are essentially regular expressions that get assigned an, a name and a type. For example, in, in this case, timestamp, I just essentially wrote a specification for a regular expression for this type of, uh, the timestamp specified in this in this way, date, uh, sorry, year, dash month, dash um, day, a T, and then the time. So I, I call that timestamp and then I chose to type string because it's a string. For the position, uh, and given how I, I'm creating this log file, it's just a, an int integer. So I call that x pause, then an integer. And now I select a type, which is number. Other types could be date or Boolean. I do the same thing for uh, y pause. So it's just uh, uh, any number of digits. And then for the speed, which I call v. So here in the tokens, one defines the, the different uh, pieces that, or, or parts of that log line that one wants to uh, get into a, an output object. And then in the filter part, uh, we can have any number of filters and we assign a name to it. And then uh, we can use the tokens that we define sort of a, in, in bash, um, variable expression. So in this case, this is a, again, a regular expression where this uh, dollar sign, brace, timestamp is gonna be replaced by the regular expression that we define uh, in the timestamp time stamp token. And then as you can see, I, I find the sort of a regular expression with the tokens that match this line. And I, the output here is a JSON token. Uh, other options are just, just a string or essentially the, the parse tokens as a comma separated string. But in this case, I think it's, it's useful to have um, for demonstration purposes, you should, it's useful to just set it to tokens. So if I uh, now, let me stop this. And you can see here that we have uh, the node accepts commands. So let me just stop this one. And you can see it stopped and the line stopped, let me delete that. And now let's look at same file, but the objects, uh, but the outputs as objects. And let me just stop this so that it didn't move. So you can see here that now the payload is an object with the message type, and this is the filter name, location. And then the type timestamp, it has been extracted from the log line as a, as a string 
and the position x pos y pos and, and the velocity had been extracted as numbers so essentially it went from an unstructured real time data source to an object also in real time and as you can see here the other components of the message are the file name and the source is this is just a, a designer um, feature it tells you which uh, edge device produces this message so in this way we can uh, monitor any number of files with very flexible definition of what those files and file names are and process that in the node also very flexibly. We can be just strings or we can transform and structure the, the, the data in the node. And so when the messages are emitted, we already have objects. Um, so there are um, commands, as you can see, the, the, the node also has commands. Like I could, I could start the uh, uh, watching that file again. And you know the first message will contain all the lines that came from the, from the moment I stopped it to the moment I started, and then they will continue to come every two and a half seconds as, as they uh, as they arrived. So you can uh, and you can also specify, by the way, the, the the file name also with an input message. So incredibly flexibly flexible, incredibly powerful, exclusive to prescient, allows you to monitor files for information in real time and structures the data so that once you get a message, data is ready for cleansing or further processing. That's what I want to show today. If you have any questions or suggestions of other things that other custom notes that you would like to see, uh, please reach out, leave a comment uh, down below and we'll be uh, sure to be in touch. Thank you.